gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Firstly, out of consideration for your fellow patrons, please turn off your cell phones. And secondly, if you're one of those, I love Pink Floyd, but I can't stand Roger's politics, people. <laughs> Here. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the musician Roger Waters. He's the co-founder of Pink Floyd, one of the biggest rock bands in history. My, he's getting up there. I didn't. He's 78 years old. I did not know that, but they're still touring. God. And in the current show, you've got a montage of war criminals, according to you, and a picture apparently of President Biden on the screen, and it says, "Just getting started." What's mm. that all about? President Joe Biden? Yeah. Well, he's fueling the fire in the Ukraine for a start. That is a huge crime. Why won't the United States of America uh, encourage Zelensky, the president, to negotiate, obviating the need for this horrific, horrendous war but you're, that's you're, killing? You're blaming. How, uh, we don't know how many Ukrainians. But you're blaming the party Russia. that got invaded. Come on, you've got it reversed. Well, no, I, well that's that you. You know, any war. When did it start? What you need to do is look at the history, and you can say, well, it started on this day. You could say it started in 2008. Okay, it's basic. This war is basically about the action and reaction of NATO pushing right up to the Russian border, which they promised they wouldn't do when Gorbachev negotiated the withdrawal of the USSR from the whole of Eastern Europe. Wow, it's as if Roger Waters has been watching. You of all people. With, you have with no your, role as liberators. World War II? Talking? World War II? You, you, you got into you World War II because... Father. Come it's on. Pearl Harbor. You, Pearl Harbor. You were completely isolationist until that sad... That... Devastating I, I would argue awful we were day always in, going to in get in and that pushed us in. <laughs> wow. Talk about honesty. Now, what Smirconish is talking about there is something scholars have called America's almost messianic mission in bringing the salvation of democracy to the world. And it's a myth that developed out of World War II. And it's inextricably linked to this notion that America is now the great defender of what its proponents call the liberal world order. And both parties are privy to this messianic myth advocating America's role in bringing the salvific nature, nature of Western democracy to the world. Thank God the United States got in, right? Well, you lost your father well, in World War II. Thank God well, the yeah, United thank States... But right? thank God the Russians had already won the bloody war almost by then. Don't forget, 23 million Russians died protecting you and me you from would, the Nazi you, menace. Hey, and you would think the Russians would have learned their lesson from war and wouldn't have invaded Ukraine. Well, you, you, Fair? with all your reading, I would suggest you, Michael, <laughs> that you go away and read a bit more and then try and figure out what the United States would do if the Chinese were putting um, nuclear armed missiles into Mexico and Canada. The Chinese are too busy encircling Taiwan as we speak. Okay? They're not encircling Taiwan. Taiwan <laughs> is part of China. And oh. that's been absolutely accepted by the whole of the international community since 1948. And if you don't know that, you're not reading enough. Go and read about it. Ouch. Ouch. Learn what you're talking about. Go read a book or two, you idiot. I mean, that whole point was... How would the United States react if China was aligning troops and weapons along the American southern border with Mexico? I mean, we would obviously see that as a hostile and provocative act, and we would respond accordingly. 
so much for being here. You're very, very welcome. I'm a huge fan. So uh, you're um, off to doing, you're doing the wall. You're bringing I it am. in its entirety. In its entirety, yes. And when does when the actual start? What, what date do you remember? Uh, we, I know October 5th, it says you're at the Garden. We are at the Garden on October the 5th. I will be there October 5th, yes. We start um, at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto on the 15th of September. Okay, very good. Well, yeah. Now, is it, now, what can people expect? <clears throat> they expect the whole Wall album. Do you have the, do you have the pig? We have the pig. <laughs> the flying pig. Anyone who's never seen... We have the teacher. We have all that stuff. Uh, but we have a bunch of new projections that we've been working on for the last few months. Really? Um, yeah. And... Um, that should be exciting. It, the, 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 the piece has changed a bit in the, uh, since 30 years ago. I've broadened it, made it a bit more political. And uh, hopefully it will have a more universal message. You know, back then it was only about this one rather kind of miserable, angry, young, middle-aged man... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, completely, yes. And, um, and, and now I've tried to make it much more about the walls that divide people in a more general way. Now, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think Pink Floyd, when you, when you first uh, started, you were an art band. You, I might be way off on this, but you were all in art school together, and your buddy was doing an art installation, and they needed music. And they hired you guys to just play sounds to go with his art project. Am I wrong? Um, we, there was a, a tutor at the School of Architecture that we were all at called Mike Leonard, yeah, who was mucking around doing experiments with lights. Yeah, it was like a weird box. With yeah. just, like things it, would light it, up. And... It was a strange time because there, a lot of people were experimenting with visuals on the West Coast, shows lights and people like that. Yeah. And um, we sort of stole a lot of that and, <laughs> and uh, got lucky. Yeah, but I mean, it was great. And it was you and uh, Sid Barrett. I'm a huge yeah. fan of Sid Barrett, who... Uh, uh, that you just kind of got together and uh, it's just got kind of interesting that you were called the Pink Floyd at first, right? And it was named after two, I'm telling you, right? Am I, I don't know if well, I'm too geeking out, let me know. Uh, no, we, uh, first of all, we were called the Megadeths and then after that, <laughs> no, we were called we, the were Sigmas. You? Yes, it goes back further than the Pink Floyd sound. You were, yeah, you were the yeah. Megadeths? We were, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. I never knew that. No, I know. Not many people do, thank goodness. I don't know why I told you. No. <laughs> I get that out of people. This is fantastic. Just... You might start crying in five minutes. I, I, That's I, the way it works. I probably will. I've never been on television before. I know. This is this. I know. This is, yeah. I'm, I'm excited that you're here doing this. If only I could do an accent. <laughs> The crown sounds pretty realistic. Yeah, she can help you out. Excuse me, that's very uh, No, can, can I just quickly, just uh, one more thing about Sid, if you don't mind talking about Sid Barrett, but the, the, the rumor goes is that he just took too, too many drugs and that he just kind of lost it, and then at one point he just didn't want to play or couldn't play or couldn't function, really, and then he kind of eventually just left the band and Dave Gilmore came in. And You know, there is a... Um uh, schizophrenia is, is uh, used to describe a, a, a loose um, kind of amalgamation of symptoms, of which many Sid had. He, you know, he heard voices and he had trouble um, keeping a grip on the reality of his situation. And on top of that, he did take, you know, too many hallucinogenics. Uh, I think if you were in the, uh, the position of being an incipient schizophrenic like he was, any hallucinogenics were a very bad thing. So... Um, yeah, it was it was very sad, and and he sort of drifted away from the reality of, of the rest of our lives. And did you Sadly. is the story true that you were recording? Um, uh, I think it was "Shine On You Crazy Diamond," and 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 a bald man walked in with a toothbrush in his mouth and no eye, no eyebrows. Am I making this up? Um, I, you know, it, it's not a funny story. I'm not sure, but but. Um, he did not have a toothbrush in his mouth. Okay, as good. As I, recall. <laughs> that, I tried to make it funny. He did. He had a big bag of candies which he was eating, and 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 the story is true. If you've heard the story, that I had no idea who this person was, and this was my closest childhood friend. He yeah. he he'd put on about a hundred pounds in weight. It was completely. Uh, I just didn't recognise him. I think David eventually said to me, "You, you don't, don't get it, do you?" And I went, "Get what?" And I looked over. And, Oh my goodness, and I suddenly realized who it was. That's and we were recording the song that I wrote for Sid at the time in the studio, so it was a strange, strange moment. That's so interesting. Now, uh, as Pink Floyd went on, and uh, gosh, you 23 times platinum, The Wall, one of the five best selling albums of all time. I mean, congratulations. That's like, come on. <laughs> That's great.
I mean, that has spawned, I mean, inspired everyone and spawned other I mean, artists. But is there, have you ever written a song that you said, oh, this is just too out there? This is just too weird. <laughs> I'm freaking myself out. Uh, no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no, but I shall continue to try. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is fantastic. Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, yeah, I just wish to tell everyone, you're also on Facebook now. Finally, you caved I and did. you're on Facebook. I did. I'm part of the social networking community. Yeah. I believe it's called. I got to write some corny uh, wall jokes for you for Facebook because that, you know, when you update, all in all, you're just updating yeah. your wall. You can do that one. <laughs> you won't do that one? No. <laughs> I love that you're honest and go, no, I will not do that joke. <laughs> Who writes your material? Because <laughs> yeah, if it's me, I'm in trouble. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I can't wait to see you, and uh, I'll be at every show screaming. I'll be, uh, I'll be, uh, yeah, I'll be waving at you, and you'll be ignoring me. Uh, but anyways, thank you.